Uh, in this video, we're going to look at uh, the complex uh, exponential function. Um, and then in the next video, we're going to look at examples of uh, uh, how to find images uh, of uh, complex numbers under the uh, action of this uh, complex function. Okay, so we're just going to start uh, with the general situation of complex functions. So, um, for complex functions, we uh, look at functions that uh, map uh, complex numbers from the uh, z plane. So, uh, on the z plane, we've got x on the real axis and y on the imaginary axis. So we uh, will recall that z is equals to x plus i y. So that's why we're going to call this uh, your z plane. So z plane is a complex plane. Then um, we are going to map uh, uh, each number in the z plane onto what we're going to call the uh, w plane um, so the w plane has got u as the real part and v as the imaginary part so w is equal to u plus i v so we are going to get uh, these images via the action of uh, uh, a complex function f of z so f of z is going to be equal to w just like um, in the um, real case uh, you will recall that f of x then gives us the image which is y so in this case for every well in the real case for every x so you you, you, you plug in x and then you get out y. So x is your input variable and y is your output variable. In our case, uh, z is the input variable and w is the output variable. Um, so um, we're going to start with uh, the exponential function so we're saying this one is the w plane the other thing that you're going to notice here is that uh, so we are mapping um, from uh, the complex plane uh, and then on to another complex plane so that's what is happening generally um, so, for the um, complex exponential function, um, this is uh, what we have. Um, so, our f of z is e to the power of z. Um, but uh, we know that uh, uh, z is equal to x plus i y. <laughs> Uh, this we can write as e to the power x times e to the power i y. And then, um, of course, e to the power i y, because y is a real variable. So this is simply cosine y plus i sine y. So that's going to be, uh, that's what the... Um, complex function is going to look like so um, what you're going to notice here so um, if I remove brackets here so this is e to the x cosine y plus i e to the x sine y this implies that because uh, w is u plus iv so u um, is equal to e to the x cosine y and v is e to the x sine y um, before we um, move on you're going to notice that uh, this is uh, pretty similar uh, to the exponential form 
of a complex number uh, where we say r cosine theta plus i sine theta the r here is always positive and it gives us the undirected distance radial distance from the origin the theta is the argument so in this complex exponential function you can see that the y is playing the role of the argument and the e to the x which is always going to be positive is playing the role of the radial distance from the origin um, so for this number here um, if we plot it it's always going to be a distance of r from the origin and then the argument is going to be theta so for this one here um, if we uh, do a similar uh, thing uh, the distance from the origin this time is going to be given by e to the x and the angle here the argument is going to be y so that's going to be in your um, w plane so this is u and uh, this is v so from this we see that the magnitude of the complex um, function is just going to be e to the x we're actually going to um, um, demonstrate this in a moment and the um, and the um, and the, um, the magnitude is e to the x and the argument is just going to be y so um, let's just uh, show how this works out um, so um, we're going to have so if looking for the magnitude of e to the z so that's going to be the magnitude of e to the x into cosine y plus i sine y this is going to be equal to e to the magnitude of e to the x um, times magnitude of cosine plus i sine y but uh, e to the x is always positive it's real so its magnitude is just going to be e to the x this one is going to be the square root of cosine squared y plus sine squared y which is equal to one so and that shows us that uh, magnitude is just going to be e to the x then the argument of e to the z is going to be the inverse tangent then we're looking for the imaginary part so the imaginary part is this one e to the x sine y so e to the x sine y the real part is e to the x cosine y the e to the x cancels out so um, and sine y over cosine y is just tangent y so that shows us that y is just going to be the argument of the um, the complex number so that means if we choose any number z um, this side um, so suppose um, suppose uh, this is uh, one two oh, which means um one plus two i okay so x is one so that means the distance from the um, origin is going to be e to the power one because x is one and then the argument is going to be uh two radians um so two radi uh, so remember we're working we're gonna have to take our y in radians here uh this is zero radians this is pi over two um so pi over two is like three over 
three point something over two is pi radians so uh, two radians is going to be in the second quadrant so the image of this number would be somewhere there where that is e and this angle is uh, two radians so that would be the image but we're going to do more examples uh, in the next video so for now we're going to end uh, this uh, introductory video here of the x complex exponential function thank you for watching